Did you know that your car logs a ton of data? It logs data every day, every night, every time you drive it, all the time. Do you know what it logs and what it's used for? Welcome to Tech and Tesla Sweden. Today, we're gonna focus on data and the data that your Tesla actually logs and what you can use it for. But before going further, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Let's go. So your car collects data all the time and writes to the logs. Uh, I have been extracting data for my specific Tesla Model Y performance. And this is how it looks. It's one file for each day. Uh, and I took this month, July, in this case, uh, just to show you the amount of data it actually can create. So one single day uh, generated 136 megabytes of raw uh, flat file data. When this is imported to Excel, it's over 350 megabytes. So it's a big file. It's over 500,000 rows in this specific uh, log. Uh, so. Uh, this is this example is based on a trip to to Copenhagen and back. So the 6th of July we traveled from Stockholm to to Copenhagen, and on the 9th of July we traveled back from Copenhagen to to Stockholm. That's why these two specific files are that big. So what's all this data for? I mean, this is a gold mine for Tesla, a company that's data driven, uh, that's pos that that has the possibility to analyze. A lot of data in a data lake. Uh, this helps them to evolve the company a lot, to evolve the products, to make the products better, to remove things that are not needed anymore, to do uh, analysis on human behavior in the cars. How does the, the passenger use the infotainment system? How does the, does the passenger adjust the seat? And you probably remember that Tesla recently removed the, the passenger side lumbar support and that decision was uh, taken uh, with the logs as a source. They clearly saw that um, the right passenger lumbar was rarely or never used by the passenger uh, and they could see that in the logs. So there is a specific events for the lumbar movement and the lumbar switch. Uh, you can, they can also use it for analysis of, of accidents. They can see, for instance, was the, before the crash, was the, 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 the driver using the autopilot? Was it trying to brake just before the accident? Or did he, or did he react at all? Uh, did he hold the steering wheel? Or did he get warned just before the crash? And I mean, there's also examples where Tesla had has been uh, able to provide uh, data after accidents and say that yeah, this passenger wasn't hold, this driver didn't hold the steering wheel, or this driver uh, was driving all too fast, for instance. So all this is part of the logs and the different event types. And I think this is how. You, this is what you need to do to be able to evolve your cars by anal analysis of actual data. Uh, and this will help you as a company to really understand uh, your customer. Another example of, of uh, what you can use the data for is you can carry out a lot of root cause analysis uh, when something breaks or something happens to a specific car or in volume to be able to understand uh, the behavior, uh, both of the driver. I mean, you can easily extract a lot of uh, human behavior out of these logs. I mean, you can anonymize all the logs, collect them to a specific, to a big server, a big data lake, and then analyze the data and take decisions uh, by understanding the human behavior of the driver or the passenger, for instance, in the cars. And based on that, act, add functionality, remove functionality. You can also do specific, uh, uh, for instance, crash analysis and extract logs for a specific car that uh, was part of a crash. Uh, 
then you can analyze the logs and see what actually happened. Uh, was the autopilot engaged? Did the driver uh, hold the steering wheel? Did the driver try to brake before crashing? There's a lot of data points, so you can draw a lot of decisions based on the logs. Uh, and this will, of course, help Tesla to evolve their products to make their cars better all the time. This is a very important step uh, and part of, of the new functionality, the new software updates, and everything that Tesla is doing all the time is probably based a lot of log data. It would also help uh, creating safer cars. All these sensors or that's logging events uh, is of course helping Tesla to create safer cars. You can really understand the behavior both of the car and also of the actual human driving the car. And all this together makes a perfect ground for taking decisions and evolving the products and make them better for us as customers. Let's look into the data. I have uh, extracted the, the biggest file uh, from the 6th of July. This is the long trip I did. And uh, as you see, this is a Excel sheet with over 500,000 rows. And it's a bit slow. Bear with me because it's a lot of data to analyze. Uh, the first row, all the uh, Headers is the actual event types. And every event type has uh, some different values on row level. And as you see, there's a lot of events. Uh, and to the left, the B column, you have the timestamp for, for when the actual event is logged. So for instance, we can see when the car actually locked the, the charging cable. And you can see that it secured the cable in seven occasions. And this is the timestamps. Yeah, so, so there's a couple of events when, when the car actually secured the cable. And this is probably when I charge it in different occasions during the trip. Uh, let's move further and look into the specific event types. So this is all the different event types that you see on my screen now. I mean, it's, it's almost 240 different event types. And every event type has its own uh, values. So uh, event types together with values creates a lot of different combinations. Uh, and that together with like 500,000 rows. I mean, it's a lot of data to analyze. Uh, so the limit is more or less your fantasy and your tools if you want to uh, put some time in it and dig into the data. But just to take some examples, uh, you can for instance see when the driver manually presses the brake pedal. You can see uh, when and which gear you actually uh, activated, for instance, when you put the car in park or drive, uh, you see a log for that. You can see if you have engaged the cruise control, uh, you can also see the speed you set the cruise control to, and if you decrease or increase the speed during your drive. Uh, you can see if you have autopilot and you have the functionality of uh, auto lane change. I don't have that anymore, but I had it on an earlier car. You can see when the car actually uh, went through auto lane change or when auto lane change uh, got wrong and get cancelled. So, I mean, there's a lot of information. You can even see the wiper speed. You can see temperatures from, from certain uh, temperature sensors in the car. You can see how, how, you set, set, how you use the settings in the screen when you change settings. You can see when someone, someone the passenger or the driver adjust their seat. Everything is logged. So let's look into some examples. Uh, I have been creating pivot tables and just the first example is like 
the functionality of the outer lane change. I mean, I don't have outer lane change as a function, but the car still acts on it in the logs. I can clearly see that. So I was driving uh, the whole day. I mean, I didn't start six o'clock in the morning. I think this is not uh, CET. This is uh, some other time zone. So it's probably around eight. But as you see here, for instance, if you look into uh, two o'clock at the afternoon, you see that there was some, some happenings regards auto lane change state. And we can see that there's a lot of different values in this event type. And you can see that, for instance, uh, if you have this functionality, you can more clearly or easily understand why the auto lane change didn't work. For instance, you can see that uh, the car thinks that there's no lanes to, 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 to change to, uh, or that aborted the, the auto lane change by disengaging the, the, the turn signal. So, so this can help you to understand the data better if you are interested in that. So here's another example. Uh, I have been extracting data for, for specifically the event of uh, the visual warnings when it comes to, to the auto steer functionality, the autopilot. So I engage the autopilot and then I'm not as focused as I should be and I'm getting a visual warning on the, on the, on, on the screen. So this is the number of visual warnings that I got during this drive. So for instance, it seems like I have been using Autopilot a lot around one o'clock uh, on the afternoon, and I got 12 warnings during one hour. Uh, so there you see, uh, maybe I need to be more uh, active while driving. Another example is how much did I actually press the brake pedal manually? I mean, how often did I brake or touch the brake pedal? And I mean, it's, it's more often than I thought. I mean, this is a very long trip, but, um, but if you just touch it, for instance, it will log uh, a post for that. So, Let's say, let, let's look at the same time. Uh, for instance, one o'clock during the same day, I pressed the brake pedal seven times during that hour. And you can break this down to minutes and seconds to see exactly when you press the brake pedal or when you got the visual warning of the auto steer functionality. So I got this data uh, by logging into to my Tesla account and actually asking Tesla uh, for, for my own data. I mean, in Europe, uh, we have this partially new uh, regulation that's called GDPR. Uh, and with that rule, you can all the time, whenever you want, uh, get hold of your own data. It's, also, it's probably also possible to, to get the data directly from the car by connecting uh, ODBC or something. Um, I don't know uh, if it's, maybe it's cryptated. Uh, Probably is, but you can get it from Tesla. I mean, I don't, I don't mean that you should do this all the time. But if you're interested uh, to look for a specific date, specific day, and see what actually happened, or how did I drive, uh, how did autopilot manage, then you can go back and, and get that specific day and ask for it from from Tesla. Uh, they actually extract, extracted the data, took it from the car, and sent it to me. It took like half an hour. And then I got a mail when I, that I logged in and, and downloaded a big zip file with all the logs. So that's what you can do if you're interested. So, I mean, this is very important for a company like Tesla. Not all the, the legacy automakers understand this yet. A lot of them probably do the same thing, but they are not as data driven as Tesla are. And I think that's a very, very important thing. Uh, in the evolution of cars. Involve software and involve data-driven development. Understand your customer, understand the behavior of your customer to be able to deliver the right functionality at the right time for your customers. Let's keep that in mind. So that's all for today. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.